Number 10. A fairground ride spins its occupants inside a flying saucer-shaped container. If the horizontal circular path the riders follow has an 8-meter radius, at how many revolutions per minute will the riders be subjected to a centripetal acceleration whose magnitude is 1.5 times that due to gravity? All right. So in terms of problem solving, I want to take a different approach uh, approach to this question. Um what I want to do is actually over time, I want to give you guys alternative ways to look at problems. So in this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the question. What are they asking me to calculate? They're saying how many revolutions per minute? Okay, so I have to calculate revolutions per minute. Okay, first I identify the question. Then what I do is I think to myself, well, revolutions per minute, what unit is that or what variable is that in physics? Right, it's basically... An angle, more or less, per time. So, hmm, wait a minute. It's a circular path or an angle per time. That sounds a lot to me like omega, right? Or angular velocity, right? Which is omega. So now what I do, once I know what variable I'm being asked for, I start with a formula that has it in it. Okay, now this part, you might say, well, I look on the right-hand side, I see omega here, and I see omega here. Well, which one do I start with, Andrew? So this part takes, not creativity, but it just takes a little forward-looking, uh, you know, it, it, I was going to say forward-lookingness, but I, I don't think that's a word. Uh, what I mean to say is, it takes a little foresight. Ah, there's the word. So meaning, you want to look and see what else you're given in the problem. I see I'm given centripetal acceleration, right, and stuff like this. So I'm thinking to myself, well, eh, probably would be more closer to this formula because it has velocity in it, and then I know velocity is related to that centripetal acceleration. You see? So it just takes a little bit of strategizing to, to be able to piece that together. So I'm going to use this equation to start. Okay, and what I'm going to do here, I write uh, V is equal to R omega, and I'm just going to solve this thing right away for omega. Because I know now, as long as I know the tangential velocity and the radius, I can find my angular uh, velocity. But I don't know V, I don't know the tangential velocity. So that's fine. Now what do I do? Now my question is, I'm not focused on omega anymore. I know that I have a formula here that can help me solve for it. So I'm not focused on this anymore. My attention now turns, do I know these two? I know the radius, that's here. But I don't know velocity, so guess what? Now my mind focuses on this now. Do I know an equation now that has velocity in it um, that relates some of the other given information in the problem? Like centripetal acceleration. Yeah, I do, right? That formula is pretty clearly right here, right? So what I need to do here is I'll write it down, and I need to now solve this equation for velocity so I can plug in its result into my equation over here. So this is simply, right, you cross multiply acceleration, uh, centripetal acceleration times the radius will equal V squared. Take the square root of both sides, right? So now you have the velocity equaling the square root of the centripetal acceleration multiplied by R, right? So now what I'm gonna do is take this, Okay, and, or I should say, let me box just this part. I'm going to take this now and substitute that on in for V here, right? because they're both equal. So now it becomes omega is equal to square root of the uh, centripetal acceleration multiplied by the radius all over the radius. And then I'm going to say to myself, okay, wonderful. Do I know all these pieces? Well, I do know R, so that's great. Do I know the centripetal acceleration? And you'll say... Well, let me look back and it says, oh man, it doesn't give me a number. It gives me a number related to something else. It says 1.5 times that due to gravity. But you might say, oh, that's easy. I'm just going to take G multiplied by 1.5 and plug it in. And that's fine. I'd have absolutely no problem with that. What I'm just going to do here is I'm going to create another formula. All right. I'm going to say that I know now my centripetal acceleration because they, they, they told this to me in the problem. Let me just underline what I'm going to do here. They told me that this centripetal acceleration... All right, is going to be 1.5 times gravity, right? So I'm going to leave it in this form. I'm not actually going to calculate the number yet. I'm going to leave it in this form and now plug that into 
my formula here. And now I find that the angular velocity will equal the square root of 1.5 times g, right, times r, all over r. And now I ask myself, do I know all of these variables? I know r, that was given, right, it's 8 meters, here it is. And I also know g, right, that's 9.80. And now I say, okay, great, now I'm going to calculate. All right, so this, this method is sometimes very useful because in certain questions, you might not be given enough, what appears, I should say, enough information in order to solve it. So you really want to try to become keen on being able to substitute equations one in for the other, solve it for one variable, plug it into another, this whole song and dance. Okay, it's very, very helpful in physics. So, and it's a skill, all right, meaning, which is good because you, you can get better at a skill by practicing. All right. So if you're not, if it's a little hard now, that's fine. I'm going to do questions like this probably going forward uh, with this particular method. I'll probably alternate back and forth between a couple of methods, but uh, this method is a very useful one. All right. So, and you can get more practice by watching the videos and then trying the problems on your own. All right. So here we have now simply just plug it in. So square root of 1.5 times 9.8 times 8 and then divide that by 8. So I get 1.36, right? 1.36, um, and that is now in radians. Don't forget this. This is in radians per second. Now, that isn't, that isn't the answer we want, okay? Not yet, but this is an important step. Now you have to realize that, well, how do I get from radians to second to revolutions per minute? This is just dimensional analysis. Now, this is, this is nothing hard. Right, so I'm going to do it over here on the right. So 1.36 radian per second. I have to cancel radian so they go on the bottom. I need revolution on the top. you got to know the relationship that there are 2 pi radians in one revolution. So that gets rid of the radians. And then i got to get rid of the seconds which originate in the denominator. Therefore, I'm going to put its value in the numerator. I'm going to put minutes on the bottom and think, do I know a relationship between these two? And we do, right? 60 seconds in a minute. So notice how the seconds whoop, the seconds will cancel, leaving me with revolutions per minute. Wunderbar, right? This is great. So let's just calculate it. 1.36 times 60 divided by, oh, hold on, 1.36 times 60 divided by 2 times pi. 12 point, actually almost becomes 13, right? So we get 13.0 revolutions per minute. And that now is the uh, final answer. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.